The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There's an old Scottish song that goes... Oh, it's nice to get up in the morning. But it's nicer to lie in bed. Of course, when you get up in the morning depends very much on what you have to do during the day ahead. And if what you have to do, for example, is concerned with murder, then you had better get up very early indeed. Or perhaps you'd better not go to bed at all. Liz, it... It can't be. I'd like to know why not. Because... Because you're dead. All right. What do you mean, all right? All right. I'm dead. If you're dead, how can I be talking to you, see you? Just because I'm dead. It doesn't have to be the end of everything. Why, we're going to have some great times together. Wait and see. <laughs> Room 418 was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Michael Tolan. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. And the best and the worst of this is that neither of us is to blame. If you have forgotten my kisses, I have forgotten your name. Now, there's a poet who lays it on the line. None of this sloppy sentimentality about love that is eternal, undying, everlasting. No, sir. Like everything else, love comes, love goes. It has its day, or its night, and... Then, well, forever was yesterday. Of course, there are those people who have better memories than others. They have problems. Where to, pal? Mister, where are we headed? Huh? Uh, the International Hotel. We're off. Yeah, I rejoice to say that you're going to be the last of the Mohicans. The what? (laughs) It's a figure of speech. That was the last plane into the airport. This is going to be my last trip. You're going to be my last fare. (sighs) I want to tell you it's been a day. You don't know what's been going on here all week with this kind of snow and the airport's really jumping. Uh, How are things back in the big city? Uh, I beg your pardon? Nothing, nothing. Just making talk. You don't feel like yapping? That's okay. Thank you. Hey, uh, didn't you arrive with me before... Uh, I beg your pardon? It's just I thought I'd, I'd seen you. Seen me? Yeah. Wasn't well, you in my cab maybe just the other day? No, that's impossible. I've never been here before. Yeah? Must have been two other guys. Yeah. Oh, hey, let me ask you something. You want the American plan? Excuse me? All the restaurants near the slopes. They're jammed. Best bets to eat at the hotel. Does it say American plan on your reservation? I, uh, I haven't thought about it. I don't have a reservation. What, what did you say? You don't have a reservation? No. Well, what do you go to the International Hotel for? I would assume they have some sort of accommodation. <laughs> Why are we stopping? Pal, it's a $10 ride out there, plus the tip. And? You're throwing your money away. Oh, surely they must have some. Take it from me. They got nothing. You want to get a night's sleep? Your best bet is to stretch out in the lounge back at the airport. Let's go on. I'll take a chance. There's always an empty room somewhere. Not this weekend. Well, don't worry about it. Why should I worry? I got a place to sleep. Sorry. Are you sure? Positive. Why Why don't you look again? It doesn't matter how many times I look. Oh, sure, you must have some kind of room. Don't have a thing in the house. Uh, 
Gloria. Gloria Svetic? That's what it says in your name tag? Well, at least you can read. We don't have any rules. Let me see. Your eyes are blue, but I think they turn green when you're telling a lie. Now, isn't it a fact that hotels always hold a certain percentage of rooms in reserve? It sure is, and we already rented ours. <laughs> Gloria, I hate to say this. Then don't. But I don't believe you. Have it your way. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. You're right. You shouldn't have. Ah, it was such a long trip, and now I... I don't know what to do. Well, between you and me, what you should have done was made a reservation before you came up to the most crowded resort in the state at the height of now, the season. Now, teacher, don't wrap my knuckles. The problem is, what do I do now? I don't know. There's not another plane out of here till 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, well, what do the Eskimos do? Oh, I understand they build a little shelter out of snow. It's supposed to be quite warm. We could do that. Or you might try that red couch in the lobby. It isn't too bad. <laughs> You. Uh, were you asleep? Well, uh, not exactly. You want a cup of coffee? Thanks. What, uh, what time is it? Uh, quarter after twelve. Oh, it's gonna be a long night. You know, you look familiar. Do I? I am sure I've seen you before, and, and it was recent. Where? Up here. <laughs> no, that couldn't be. Why not? This is my first trip. Well, I guess I could be wrong. I like to think I never forget a face. If we'd met before, I'm sure I'd remember. What made you come up to this place just like that? No, it was just one of those spur-of-the-moment things. Are you a spur-of-the-moment person? I suppose you could say that. <laughs> it just about sums me up. Really? Yeah, and I suppose that's one of the things that... That, uh... That what? That she found so, uh... So... That she didn't like... Yeah. But that's something I really shouldn't talk about. Oh, sure, sure. But between you and me, if you were to walk in here with her, I'm assuming you're referring to your wife or your girlfriend, I would know it. You'd know what? I would know there's something about you that she didn't like. How would you know? Hotel people know. You can tell a lot about a person just by the way they walk across the lobby. The tone of their voice when they ask for the key. A million things. You'd be surprised how people give themselves away. Really? Have I uh, given myself away? Yeah. You gave away certain things. Did I? Definitely. To begin with, you're spoiled. Oh, am I? Mm -hmm. You're spoiled by a lot of women. What makes you say that? Because you're so handsome. Do you think I'm handsome? Sure. Listen, you're the kind of fellow who relies on his good looks to get him through. All your life, people have kind of petted you and coddled you and made things easy. I had no idea what I was getting into. Listen, we live in a world where good-looking people are always being catered to. So, after a while, a fellow like you, he begins to believe maybe he's leading a charmed life. <laughs> yeah, maybe. After a while. You begin to believe nothing really bad could ever happen. Everything will turn out okay in the end. Somebody's going to come along and you can sweep them off their feet. Hey, now you may be pushing it just uh, a little bit. Am I? Isn't that why you came barging in here without a reservation? Didn't you think that would turn out okay in the end also? <laughs> well, I must admit you got me pegged. I thought I could sweet talk my way into a room, especially if there was a girl behind the desk. But it seems I didn't score. Mm, maybe you did score. Just a little. Not the bullseye, but somewhere on the target. Really? There might be a room, an empty room. You, uh, you mean it just opened up? No, it's been empty a while. Gloria, do you mean that all this time you've been telling me you have no space, you actually did have a vacant room? I didn't say the room was vacant. I said it was empty. Oh, there's a difference? Well, sure. When you got a vacant room, it means it hasn't been rented out to anybody. When you got an empty room, it means there's nobody in it. Well, I still don't see the difference. Look, last night, this woman, she checked in, and, uh... Well, nobody's seen her since. What do you mean? Nobody's seen her. She hasn't been around here all day. Well, where could she have gone? Well, nowhere except the slope. And she'd have to show her hotel pass to get on the lift. Well, maybe nobody remembers seeing her. No, she never went there. She never picked up her pass. It's still at the desk. And she never checked in with the dining room head waiter to get assigned to a table either. And into the bargain, the maid says the bed hasn't been slept in. Well, what could have happened? Well, I think she skipped. Why? I think she was scared. Oh, how do you know? 
Well, to start, she gave a phony name when she registered. How could you tell? Experience. You know by the way they pronounce it, by the way they hesitate while they write it. What, uh, what name did she give you? Elizabeth Faraday. Elizabeth Faraday. You know her? No. Uh, she's one scared cookie, this Elizabeth Faraday, or whatever her name was. Anyway, here's what I'm getting at. She didn't use the room last night, and she hasn't been seen around all day. Here it is past midnight. So? So, do you want to rent me the room? Oh, can't do it. It's legally hers. She paid for it. What I mean is, the room's going to waste, and you need a place to sleep. I understand. But if she comes back, which I don't think she ever will, but if she does, you've got to get out of there. <laughs> I know. So what do you got to lose? Here's the spare key. Go ahead. It's room 418. Well, what if she comes back and makes a fuss? Won't the manager hold you responsible? <laughs> don't worry. He can't fire me. I got too much on him. Uh, by the way, what's your name? Uh, George. George Andrews. George Andrews, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess that's as good a name as any. What do you mean? Forget it. What are you... What are you doing up here, George? Well, I came up to go skiing, naturally. Naturally? Where's your luggage? My my luggage? Oh, uh... Yeah. I left at the airport. I was in such a hurry to get a cab and get oh, here. Oh, sure, sure. No, I mean it. It's probably still at the baggage claim. First thing in the morning, hey, I'll get look, out... Look, look, it's uh, your business. <laughs> I admit, I, uh, I didn't come up here to ski. You did? No, I came here because I'm, uh, I'm looking for someone, and, well, she... Oh, say no more. You figure you'll run into her in a place like this, huh? Yeah, that's it. I, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to. Well, good luck. Thanks. And have a good night's sleep. I really appreciate this. Thank you again. Oh, don't thank me. Thank those big blue eyes. Uh, oh, Chester, it's me. Who? Kent. Kent. Uh, where are you? Listen, Chester. Where are you? I found her. You what? I know where she is. But you said she wouldn't give you the money. I know, I know. That was yesterday. Well, what, what happened to change the picture? I'm going to change the picture. What do you mean? I'll convince her logically that it's in everybody's best interest for her to give me the money. After all, it is my money. But you said yesterday she turned you down for good. Look, just have faith in me, Chester. Kent, the wolves are closing in on me, Everything's going to be all right. Where are you? Trust me. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. But, Kent, I've got... Yeah, in the morning, if it ever comes. Dad? Uh. Uh, hello, I uh, hope I didn't wake you. How could you wake me? I'm on duty. What I really wanted to know, what time is it? You don't want to know what time it is. <laughs> I do, really. It's a quarter after one. Oh. Yeah. Why don't you turn to Channel 8? That's radio music. Very nice. That'll put you to sleep, all right. Well, thanks. Um, <laughs> good night. Good night, George. Elizabeth Faraday? If so, where has she been? Why has she returned? Well, we know why. She still has possession of the room. But why now? And why so late? Of course, we're working on the supposition that this is indeed Elizabeth Faraday. It might be, it might not be. In any event, 
This development is certain to disturb the sleeping arrangements for our Mr. George Andrews. Or is his name Kent? We need Act Two for these and other answers. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Hospitality, one of the oldest of the virtues, and one of the earliest signs of civilization. To shelter, to feed, to protect the stranger, to keep him safe from the perils of nature, and to guard him against the dangerous designs of his enemies. Ah, yes. What? could be a more noble and generous act. It's too bad you have to be so careful about doing it these days. Who? Who's that? It's me, Kent. Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth. What do you want, Kent? Please, Elizabeth, don't... Don't be sharp with me. Don't be sharp with you. After what you did to me? I'm... I'm sorry, Liza. And don't call me Liza. I hate it. I'm... I'm sorry. It makes me sound like a dizzy, flighty little kook. I'm... I'm sorry. And stop saying you're sorry. Liza, uh... Elizabeth. What do you want? I... I want to tell you that I'm... Well, I have to use that word. I'm sorry. Are you? Yes. That really does me a lot of good, doesn't it? Elizabeth, you have to believe me. No. I'm in a position now where I don't have to do anything. Elizabeth. Why did you come back here? Why? Oh, I, I couldn't believe what had happened. Why is it so hard to believe? Because... Because murder. What about murder, Kent? I'm not the kind of man who would commit murder. You're not? No. No, where do I come to murder? Murder is committed by... by those people you read about in the newspapers. Not... not people like me. I wish I could feel sorry for you. That's why I came back. I... I couldn't believe that I could... I came up here yesterday and... and I managed to find you. I'd rather we didn't talk about yesterday, Ken. No, please hear me out. I... I couldn't believe that I was able to come up to your room without being seen by anyone and just just kill you and hide your body in the closet. It's, it's hard to believe. Do you want to look in the closet, Ken? No, no. Go ahead. Look. No, Elizabeth, please don't. Don't ask me to do that. Nobody's looked in the closet yet. It's a pretty sloppy hotel. A lot of glitter and polish on the outside. But I think they just shove the dirt under the rugs. Elizabeth, I want... The maid just poked her head in the door this morning. She saw the room was still made up. She didn't even bother to come in. Of course, sooner or later, somebody's going to look in that closet. Elizabeth, I'm trying They'll to... They'll have to. I, I couldn't believe I did it. And nobody heard the shot. You had the noise of the crowd. Friday, it's a mob scene around here. Everywhere. The airport... People pile into the cabs. They swarm all over the hotel. You had the crowd on your side, Kent. All the music and the party. Elizabeth, I don't want to believe it. I don't think that matters anymore. I can't live with it. It's, it's too much. Nothing's too much. As long as you're alive, anything at all beats being dead. Elizabeth, I... I want to undo it. You can't undo murder. After I... After I did it, I walked downstairs. I, I lost myself in the crowd in the lobby. There were busloads of people bound for the airport. I crowded in with them. I got there. I was going to take a plane back home, but... I... I couldn't. Poor Kent. You should have gone back to the city. I'm telling you, I couldn't. You should have gotten rid of the gun. I know. You did get rid of it, didn't you? I, uh... No. No, I still have it. <laughs> You're being stupid. Oh, the whole thing is stupid. I didn't mean to kill you. Then why did you have the gun? Oh, what's the use? The thing for you to do is to get out of here. Go back to the city. Oh, make sure you have an alibi. Your friend Chester will be waiting to lie for you. It's the least he can do. And then, when they find out about me, you'll be in the clear. What are you saying? Do you want me to... 
to get away with it? I should think you'd want to see me caught and punished. Now, that's the difference between us. You're alive. I'm dead. So many of the things that seem important to you, like revenge, no longer have any meaning for me. Don't you want me to pay for what I did to you? I don't even think about those things anymore. Are you going to answer it? I, uh... Yeah. Hello? Good morning, George. Oh, yes, it... It is morning. It finally came. It always does. It's 6.30. 6.30? Well, didn't you tell me you came up here to look for a certain person? Uh... Oh, yes, yes, that's right, I did. Well, everybody gets up early. Breakfast at 7, they're off to the slope by 8 o'clock. Yeah. So, unless you're down here early, you might miss her. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. What's this, uh, little intrigue you have going on with the girl at the desk? I had to tell her something. And I'm sure you told it to her with that certain twinkle in your eye and that soft, caressing tone in your voice. <sighs> That's your trouble. You were always insanely jealous. I wouldn't say insanely. I always had good cause. <laughs> and you're still jealous. No. That's gone now. Along with everything else. Elizabeth... Listen to me. You better go downstairs. That girl at the desk is waiting I don't care you. about that you girl. You better. She can hang you. She what? Kent. Oh, poor Kent. You don't realize it yet. When they find out I'm dead... Don't say that. Not just dead, but murdered. You're going to need an alibi. You'll have to prove you weren't here. But once your picture gets into the paper... I don't care. You better... Well, they may have to bring you up here to identify what used to be my body. Don't talk like that. If she wants to remember you were here all the time... Elizabeth, you're going to listen to what I have to say. Go down and have breakfast with her. I'm not hungry. You owe it to her, Kent. She's a smart girl. She knows there could never be anything serious. Not with someone like you. But you fascinate her. And she likes to toy with the idea. Elizabeth, I came here so that we could... We could understand something. I understand everything. It's one of the few advantages of my present state. Go downstairs for breakfast. Suppose I do that and I come back and you'll be gone. I'll still be here. Unless someone looks in the closet. Don't say that. And there's no danger of anyone doing that. Till just about noontime. I told you, the service here leaves a lot to be desired. Elizabeth. Go downstairs, Kent. Before she becomes curious and comes up here. You can see how jammed it is, huh? Uh, yeah. You uh, seen the person you're looking for? Uh, no, no. You're in trouble, aren't you, George? What makes you say that? It's true, isn't it? No. <sighs> well, uh... Yes, I suppose so. I knew it. I knew it the second you walked in last night. I could tell. How? It was written all over you. How bad is it? Look, come on. I want to help you. Do you? Really? Yes. Why? Why should you want to help me? Because... Because you like me? Yeah, I guess you could say like. <laughs> what do you know about me? I know you've got very deep blue eyes. And that's enough for you? It's enough for most women. I don't care what they tell you. It's enough. You, uh... You're a wonderful person, Maria. How many times have you looked into a girl's eyes and said that? Well, well I... all right. What's the difference? It works. Now, let me help you, George. How? I don't know, but... Whatever it is you need, I'll try. You're running away, aren't you? Why do you say that? Well, you're here without a reservation, without luggage. It looks as if you had to leave wherever you were in a hurry. No, it, it wasn't exactly like that. Look, George, I have a place, a nice little place. My folks left it to me. It's on the other side of the lake. No one ever comes around. Nobody could ever find you there. It's yours for as long as you need it. <sighs> Thank you, Gloria, but... Uh... But nothing. And I could do the cooking. I'm really a great cook. I'm sure you are. So? What do you say? I, um... Oh, come on, George. Don't look so serious. How bad can it be? How bad? It's money, isn't it? Yes, it's money. Well, then it can't be too serious. 
It's serious enough. Ah, oh, yeah, but you get yourself a good lawyer, then once you're in the courtroom, you turn on the charm. You know what I mean. Yeah, I know. You'll see. It'll all work out eventually. You think so? And I'll help you all I can. I'm really not good enough for you. That's true. But you can't help being what you are, and I can't help being the way I am, and that's the way it goes. But you'll help me. Yeah. I'll help you. Thank you. <laughs> Seems to me that all I've been doing since we met is, is thanking you. I... I'm going to need you. I'll be with you all the way. No matter what I did? Sure. That is, unless maybe you murdered somebody. <laughs> but there's no danger of that. I can look in your eyes and I can see you're no killer. <laughs> So much for woman's intuition. What do you think of our hero, or more accurately, our central character now? Well, leaving morality and ethics out of it, you always have to have at least grudging admiration for a master in any field. Obviously, our boy has written the book on how to attract women. Yes, indeed. It seems he can always bring them around even after they're dead. The late wife, the new girlfriend. Do we have here what the French would call a menage à trois? You can never tell what we have until you live through Act Three. Two is company, they say. And three is a crowd. But three is also a triangle. Triangles in geometry are usually neat in shape with properties that follow strict mathematical rules. On the other hand, there are those triangles which exist among human beings, in which case there are no holes barred. We have a pretty good triangle going for us here. And while it might completely mystify Mr. Euclid, it would pose no problem at all to Mr. Freud. Look, you didn't kill someone, did you, George? <laughs> no, of course. Good. So, do you want to come out to my place? It's, it's wonderful of you to offer, Gloria. Look, I know that you're in a jam, and you're kind of upset, and maybe you can't think too clearly. No, I... I'm, I'm all right. Which is another reason why you should get away. In the condition you're in, you might say or do something that, uh, well... Maybe, maybe you're right. Then you come? Yes. Ah, I'm finished here now, so come with me. We'll get in my car. What, now? Like they say, there's no time like the present. No, no, wait. Why? There's, uh, there's something I have to do. What? It's important. It, it's very important. Well, okay. No, I, I just have to do this, this one thing. Hurry back, honey. I'll be waiting. Elizabeth? Yes. Huh. There's... There's something we have to straighten out. It's... It, it's important. It must be. You're letting it delay your little romantic rendezvous. What rendezvous? A little cabin on the lake with Gloria. Oh, oh that I... I didn't even know what I was saying. You know something? I think you're telling the truth. I've always told you the truth. No. This is just one of those rare occasions. You see a pretty girl or even one who isn't so pretty. And you have to show off your technique. That isn't fair. But it's true. All those affairs of yours, Kent. I don't believe you really enjoyed them. They were just reflex actions. This girl, Gloria... You don't even like her. Elizabeth, I didn't come here to discuss... She doesn't have the kind of regular features you go for, the classical profile. She's not as beautiful as you are, Elizabeth. That we know. But as I say, you can't help yourself. Will you forget about that girl? Why not? I've forgotten about all the others. It's just that you always have to have a little affair going. Yes, even at a time like this. Even when you've come back here to ask me such an important question. 
Then you... Then you know what I want you to do. Oh, yes. But it can't be done. Don't say that. If it were possible for me to feel sorry, I would say I'm sorry. But it has to be done. Why? Because handsome Kent Faraday wants it that way. Because Kent Faraday always gets what he wants. Elizabeth, if you only she knew... She said she'd stay with you no matter what you did. Unless it was murder. But if you play her right, she'll hold still even for that. Elizabeth, I don't want to talk about her. Go with her. Be with her. Make love to her. The way only Kent Faraday knows how. Then she'll never want to give you up. Then she'll protect you. She'll lie. She'll cheat. She'll steal. <laughs> Ask me. I know. Go to her now. Before it's too late. I I want to talk about you and me. There is no more you and me. If they discover the murder now, she'll drop you. You see, she won't have a chance to find out what she'd been missing. That's her now. Answer it. I want to talk to you. You're keeping her waiting. Uh, yeah, hello? Honey, you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. You sure? I'm fine, just fine. What's keeping you up there? Um, I'll be down soon. Just between you and me, it's such a great day, and are we going to enjoy it? <laughs> you bet. Honey? What? What is it? Did anyone ever tell you how blue your eyes are? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll see you right away. Blue eyes, you're just wasting your time here with me. Elizabeth. And you're also risking your life. Listen to me, will you? We... We have to undo it. Why do you persist in such a... It has to be. I, I didn't want to kill you. You did. I'm dead. And I'm gone. No, no, it isn't true. Isn't it? Just open the closet door. You'll see me. I'm still propped up against the wall, just as you left me. Elizabeth. I have two bullet holes in my breast. Please. Did you have to shoot me twice? I... I didn't know what I was doing. Yes, you did. But you don't believe I'm dead. If you're dead, how... How can I talk to you? How is it I can see you? My being dead doesn't mean you can no longer see me or that you can't talk to me. Not at all. Elizabeth, after I... After I pulled the trigger, I... I prayed. No. After you pulled the trigger, you pulled it again. Remember? I prayed on my knees. I, I prayed with all my heart. Poor Kim. I pray, give me another chance, a second chance. Did you? Just give me a chance to come here and see her again, talk to her again. Why should she die? Because I was greedy and stupid. There is no second chance. There has to be. You would do it again, the same way. Oh, no. No, that isn't true. You still need the money, don't you? Well, yes. You'd still have to come to me for it, and I'd still refuse. You see, you'd have to kill me. That's why you're not getting a second chance. I wouldn't kill you. You mean you go back, you'd face the music? Maybe even spend a year or two in jail? I wouldn't have to. The case against you is pretty strong. I know, but I'd, I'd have the money to pay off. Where would you get it? Where, Kent? you give it to me. Oh, no. I refused. That's why you killed me, remember? This time I wouldn't have to kill you. I still would refuse. No, you wouldn't. You see, Elizabeth, I... I would convince you. No, Kent. Never. I would. Believe me, I would. That won't work. You see, the way I am now, that sort of thing doesn't exist for me anymore. Elizabeth, you fell in love with me once. You can't deny it. No. Think back. Remember how it was the first few years? Just you and me. How much in love we were. We were, weren't we? Are you afraid to answer? No. No, I'm not afraid. Look in my eyes and tell me. Tell me we were in love. It's the truth, isn't it? Yes. Then say it. Why are you afraid to say it? We... we were in love. Yes. 
Maybe I forgot to grow up. Maybe I remained a child too long. But you enjoyed the fun, too, didn't you? Yes. The nights we had all over the world. Everything I've done up till now was the action of a spoiled, immature kid. But I've... I've grown up suddenly. Have you? When I fired those two shots, it was as if something had exploded in my brain. There was a great flash, and I saw everything. Everything I've ever done wrong in my entire lifetime. It was a long list. I'm different now. I'm the man you always wanted me to be. Are you? Yes, darling. Yes. How do you account for Gloria downstairs? Oh, you said it yourself. It was a it was a reflex action. She means absolutely nothing to me. None of them ever meant anything to me. You know that, darling. From now on, everything's going to be wonderful. Is it? I love you so much. And you love me. You do. <laughs> You're angry. You have every right to be. I deserve every bit of that anger, but, dearest, that's in the past. It's gone. The bad things are gone. Are oh, they, Kent? Really? Yes. And I'll tell you something. Our love will be better, greater, stronger, because it will have weathered this, this awful storm. And that's why I've come to ask you for money. Money? I, I've come to you for money before, Elizabeth. I've, I've squandered your inheritance. And I know you're down to the last of it. I wouldn't ask if it were just another get-rich-quick scheme. No, it's, it's different this time. Different? I want to wipe the slate clean. Start all over. I'll take a teaching job. Will you? Yes. It's really all I ever wanted to do. It was the happiest time of our life. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. Those days will come back again. We can bring them back. Can we, Kent? We'll not only bring them back, but we'll... We'll keep them for ourselves always. Hello. Blue Eyes. Uh, yeah. I'm waiting. You're going to be much longer? Uh, no, no. Well, hurry up. The day's getting away. Yeah, sure thing. Look, darling. If you write out a check, I can take it downstairs to the desk and have it go out in the morning mail. Kent? And that way Chester can pay everyone off. Kent, uh, who was on the phone? Uh, that was the airport. The, uh... Airport? Yeah, they wanted to tell me they had space available for this afternoon if I needed it. Look, I sent Chester the check. Special delivery, and he... Oh. Uh, does Gloria work at the airport now? What? Oh, Kent. For a moment, just for a split second, I believed you. Elizabeth. I'm dead. I should know better. You're not dead. You're, you're standing here. You're talking to me. Despite it all, I believed you. It's a line I heard before, yet I... I believed you. Look, don't you understand? If I don't get that money, I'll go to jail. I understand. I understood it the first time. When you shot me. I have to have the money. Even if I wanted to give it to you, I couldn't. I don't have any more. What? You said it yourself. You said you squandered my inheritance. Something has to be left. Nothing. I won't go to jail. I would die there. I'm sorry. Wait. Wait. The the insurance. You're insured. Kent. Who would know I did it? When they find your body, I'll be gone. Kent, you asked for a second chance. Don't you see what you're doing? You've got the insurance, and it's on your life. And I'm the beneficiary. Don't do that, Kent. I have to do it. Don't you understand? Don't shoot. You can't kill me again. I don't have any choice. No. Oh, I, I've got to get out of here. Someone was shot. Somebody fired a gun. Hey, open up in there. Somebody call the cops. What? What happened in here? George. What happened? Go ahead, Kent. Tell her what happened. What are you doing with that gun? Why don't you tell her? Look. Look in the closet. Oh, you murderer. Murderer. Gloria. Oh, yes. Gloria. 
Let's see you talk your way out of this one. Blue eyes. Well, he tried to. And he was very sincere and earnest. And he was really speaking from the bottom of his heart. But I don't think the jury was really listening. I suppose it all goes back to that old saying, while there's life, there's hope. Which, in this case, would mean that while a woman's alive, you always have a chance to fool her. But once she's dead, well, she's just too smart for you. I'll be back shortly. Once again, we are confronted by the eternal questions to which there never seem to be any answers. Where do we come from? Where do we go? Well, it's been said by some that the journey is planned. The course has been charted and the path has been marked. And there cannot even be the slightest deviation in our fate. Of course, there are also those who insist that there is no plan, no chart. Indeed, there isn't even any fate. Who to believe? Well, we make out a pretty good case for both sides each time we meet. Our cast included Michael Tolan, Terry Keene, Carol Titel, and Nat Poland. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.